Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about practice. Now, um, practice is a very, very good thing. You can't get around practice. A lot of people th like to think that, oh, well these guys just practice when they're young and then by the time they get good, they stop practicing. Well, no, that's not what saxophone players do. If you're practicing, if you want to be a good musician, you got to keep practicing because music is such a broad, such a painstakingly hard craft that you got to keep practicing just to get somewhere on it. Now, when you're practicing your instrument, depending on what instrument you have, we're going to talk about saxophones today, but like we always do, but I'm just saying, guys, you got, you have to practice. Don't, there's no way around it. You got to practice. Now, if I go a day without practicing, I feel lost. I feel like, oh my goodness, something went wrong because I have to practice, but at the same time, my uh, my major is this, and I'm not a music major. I don't major in music, but I, I like to spend a lot of time on music. So I have to figure out some way to work it in my schedule. Um, but um, uh, guys, when you're practicing, the first thing you want to do is you want uh, to um, get a goal. Get a goal in mind. What do you want to do? Say, for instance, um, if you want to learn how to do Altissimo Register. Now, if you learn how to do Altissimo Register, it's... It's a pretty cool technique, but um, you probably don't want to spend a lot of time on it. You probably want to spend a little bit of time on it, but you want to incorporate it. Now, what I mean by incorporate it is not spend like one practice session on Altissimo. That's probably not what you want to do. But um, depending on who you are, you might want to change it up and spend one whole session. But it's probably not the best thing to do if you want to be a well-rounded musician. Most well-rounded musicians have certain things like uh, certain segments. So they practice first with their long tones and warm up, and everybody should practice scales no matter what. Scales are always good to practice, but long tones, warm up, get your horn warm, etc., etc. Then maybe move on to some method book stuff, some technique breaks, some um, some uh, fast stuff, and then go of course to your ballads and your fast paced music. Those are the two big quadrants that I want to work on. You know when I when I you know and then once I move on from that segment, I might move on to um, sight reading and um, doing this and that and the other. Other. It was sight like reading, learning music, reading music, learning how to read music, dissect music, blah blah blah. And then I'll move on to uh, sound. And sound, I'll probably go back to incorporating ballads into sound because ballads, in my opinion, help you get your sound to a to a, to a place that you weren't before. So um, when you're using ballads, ballads help you play those tones long, and you actually able to sit into your saxophone. Have you ever played a saxophone? And you just sat into the note, and you're like, wow. This is a nice, hearty, warm, heavenly like feeling. That's what you need to do when you're trying to achieve sound. And it's such a rare feeling. But if you have the right saxophone, the right mouthpiece, the right uh, armature, the right technique, the right air support, the right read, everything like that, everything's just meshing. It's just wonderful. So um, when you're playing an instrument, you want to go through these things. And these are just. You know, that's a tidbit of what you want to do when you're practicing. You know, there's always a whole bunch of things that you can do and change and and, and do and do. But when you're incorporating, say uh, altissimo, you incorporate altissimo into your playing repertoire. Like Gerald Albright said, who one of the most uh, uh, elegant people in the altissimo register, and Kirk Williams, you know, you you have to practice it in your scales. Um, I don't know much altissimo on my soprano, and really altissimo is not the best thing to do on soprano since it's already high high um register instruments so um we're just going to um not do the altissimo and just talk about it <laughs> um uh so uh when you're doing altissimo what you want to do is you want to probably try to uh you probably want to try to uh put in your scales of some sort do your overtones first your overtone series and then um as many overtones as you possibly can do um with your low keys and i've done this in previous videos but uh uh, what you want to do is you probably want to incorporate it by doing your overtones first. Not, excuse me, not long, but overtones. And then once you do your overtone series, then you move on to um, putting it into your scales. So, boo -doo 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 you know, so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, that's that's just how we do it. That's incorporating. That's not changing up your practice schedule or changing up your practice um, sessions. But that's incorporating what you need to know. Um, uh, 
based off of what you already know, that's adding it on, pretty much incorporating it, but not making it deter from what you want to do. Now, if you want to focus on it, you might want to change up your practice schedule. Hey, I want to do LTC mode for, you know, this, you know, this long instead of doing this. I want to focus on this. That's perfectly fine, but don't forget about your basics, like your scales, your your, your rudiments, your, um, your, your fundamentals, you know. So, the basics, making small things wonderful, taking... To be a good instrumentalist, to be good at what you do, you have to, one brick at a time. Like Will Smith said, it's about laying one brick. And not saying, because if you're setting out to build a house, you're going to be lost. It's about making one brick, sitting that brick down, and making that brick fit as perfectly as possible. And then moving on to the next brick. And then eventually you have what you want. So basically what I'm saying is make small perfect and big will be attractive to you. So So um just you know practice practice and um there's a whole bunch of different scales out there. Just because you say, oh, well, I only see major scales in my books. There's minor scales, there are bebops, uh, um, what it? was it, my favorite, blue scales. Sorry, my, 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 my key got stuck there for a second. I have this little small key, or not key, excuse me, pad on my saxophone that just always wants to stick, and it's connected to my octave key. And this is not the best octave key um, design of the 21st century, but uh, we'll go we'll get past that. There's a scale. So, you know, blues scale, bebop scales, there's a whole bunch of variety of ways. But don't think of it as, don't think of it as, wow, I need to learn all those scales. I'm gonna, this is gonna take forever. Don't think about it that way. Because if you think about it that way, you're never gonna do it. You have to think about it. Oh, listen to this, listen to this. This is this blue scale. And then go like this. And then, you know, jazz it up. But make, but know it first. Know it first and then make it fun for yourself and then move on to the next thing. But take something away from that scale. Don't just leave it in the blue, practice it and put it in your repertoire. And then you have a full scale practice going on here. And then when you're done with all the basics and the needed and the and the and the dynamic changes and the chord changes and you practice all of this stuff that's that's very, very book oriented and very, very knowledge oriented and you need to know this to be a good musician stuff, then you move on to, you know, hey, I'm gonna learn this lick that uh Charlie Parker did or or Dave Cars did and then this song, you know, depending on who you listen to. I listen to a whole bunch of saxophone players. Don't peg me to one, because a lot of people like to do that. Oh, you like it, listen to this guy when you're this way. No. That's not how we run things on Project Sax. Whatever instrumental uh, instrumentalist you like, it doesn't even have to be a saxophone player. It could be a clarinet player for all I care. But whatever you like is what you, what you need to listen to. If, if I like Jesse J, that doesn't mean that um, that's all I listen to. You know, if I like Dave Koss, Sam Bourne, Charlie Parker, uh, uh, Coltrane, um, Rollins, that doesn't mean that's the only saxophone player I'm listening to, and that doesn't mean that I, you know, this is this is what I'm not boxing myself up. Is what I'm saying. I listen to all types of music, m musicians, and not one musician, in my opinion, is better than another. One might have more experience, and one might have them in a solo one day, but like beat somebody out in a solo one day. But I mean. Yeah, you know, or said something more expressive in a solo one day. Cause this beat, I'm gonna be the best. I'm gonna beat, you know. It's in my mind, it's not so much about that. I mean, yeah, I like competition, and I like, oh well, I like to be, you know, the top dog sometimes. But I mean, in, in the in the broad spectrum of life, like like Charlie Parker said, there's probably gonna be some youngster that's gonna come up one day and really do something with this stuff, man. So it's not always about, oh, who you the best, who the best, you know, who better, you know. That's first chair, second chair, yeah, but that's just tears, you know, that people just put to show you how experienced somebody else is, is. So you can learn from them. And then once you learn from them, hey, you know, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that the person who works the best can be, 
you know, bet her, but, you know, it's never a, oh, definitive, you're the best for all time, you know. That could be one of the best of all time, but there's no one person that's the best of all time. There could be, like I'm saying, there could be nominated Grammy artists, but not one of them is better than another for the reason that everybody has their own opinion. And like Chrisette Michelle said, if nobody sung along with your song, would your song even be played? You see what I'm saying? If you couldn't share your, your gift with the world, the people who judge you, would your stuff even be actually played? So when I say there's no best one a musician or one best person, because it everybody's listening to you and everybody has a different opinion on a, any given day. You know, it's never, oh, a definitive who, oh, he's best and we're going to give him a certificate. Of, you know, and Charlie Parker got a certificate for best alto saxophonist in, I think, the 50s. But I'm just saying, it, in the grand scheme of music, what does that mean? That means little next to nothing. I mean, I'm not saying, by no way in the world am I saying Charlie Parker is not a beast of a musician who has, who, who probably one of the best, mu better musicians that saxophone playing has ever seen. I'm not saying that he's not one of the better ones, one of the top ones. But I'm saying there's no definitive Charlie Parker's the best in history. In my mind, there's no uh, uh, Coltrane's the best in history because they all have something unique to offer. They all have something unique to offer, so no one can be better if everybody's promoting one thing. Music. If one person's doing this and one person's doing that, you can't say one of them's doing better because they have different experiences, different mind structures, different different times. I mean, one solo, you might say, oh, Gerald Albright, he does a lot of licks and he does a lot of complicated stuff in his music. He does a lot of funk-driven stuff. Well, sometimes I like funk and sometimes I like uh, uh, smoother type of uh, free listening uh, Latin type styles of Jesse J. I mean, you have to... You have to really, really be objective. In my mind, you have to be objective and, and, and judge these artists for what they do and not the rank so much of the artists. I mean, there's a difference between the person who's starting playing the saxophone and the person who's like Charlie Parker. There's a difference. I know. I hear. I know. I play with a whole bunch of instruments, uh, instrumental, uh, in instrumentalists before, but I'm just saying in general, guys, it's not always about who's the best, who's the best, because that's really a facade that our society has just put on, you know, and and, 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 and driven out to, to, to for competition in, in, in the media, you know, it's, I mean, there's good, there's good to have number ones on the charts, but, I mean, in, in the grand spectrum of music, a number one could be a one-hit wonder, that's how broad music is, you can't just say one person is, oh, one person's the best, he's number one, she's number one, uh, let's give them a gold medal and people gonna stop playing saxophone forever because this is the best and you can't get any better than this. I refuse to believe that. I refuse to believe that one person can be better than another one just because they put so many hours or they didn't even put any hours in practice. I refuse to believe that because music is such a broad topic, such a broad, vast, artistic, wonderful world. You can't just say that one person is better. And this I don't really, this is a rant, this, this is a rant, this is probably one of the first rants I've ever done um, next to the Kenny G rant in the first episode. I'm just saying guys, you cannot say that one person is better than the other in music. I mean, you can have your opinions over, I think he's more experienced in that, but in my mind, somebody asks me who is my favorite saxophone artist, I never give them a definitive answer or, or definite answer. I can't just say, oh, well, Jesse J is the best of all time and there's no one's going to be better. And I can't even say, oh, well, well, Sanborn's been around for a long time and he's has the most experience out of all of them. Or well, Brecker has been around, you know, he passed a, a little while back, but I can't, I can't, you know, and he has more experience, you know, or, or Charlie Parker. Charlie Parker died in his, what, 30s? And, and he's played, he's played more uh, complicated things than a lot of people, but that doesn't make him the best in my opinion. You know, uh, he's probably one of the top, 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 top in, in difficulty level and in, in, in style and in, in practice and hard work and able to, you know, uh, and, and ability, yeah. But uh, it's so many, and, and time hasn't stopped yet. You can't say one person's the best. So, I'm just saying, guys, in my opinion, don't, don't narrow yourself. There's always, 
There's always somebody who can play, but everybody has a different style of playing. Everybody's doing their own thing. Music is such a broad topic. Nobody can be the best. Nobody can master music. And saxophones are such a broad instrument. Look how many keys, how many fingers. No one, uh, you can master, in, in, in a turn of phrase, you can master, or, or in, in a certain phrase, master is, is the most misconstrued phrase, one of the most misconstrued phrases in the, in the artistry world. Or any kind of work, or anybody that's trying to do something world. You know, uh, oh, I mastered this, so I don't have to do it anymore. No. I mean, guys. <laughs> I hear in the YouTube comments all the time, oh, you're not the best, you don't do this, you don't... Guys, it's not about being the best. It's about offering something to music. It's about, it's about offering something, uh, uh, an opinion, uh, a thought, through your music that nobody's ever heard before. This is why I improvise. improvise. This is why I do jazz. It's not about being the best. It's about fitting in. Being a good musician, yeah, but... Fitting into the music world to actually promote something and, and, and show, you know, and prove something and, and, and prove an, an emotional uh, a story of sorts. Whatever people think, uh, whatever um, thought process that people give to emotion and music and, 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 and promote and, 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 and yeah, performing. It's about putting something out there that somebody can say, hey. I relate to this, so hey, I can understand what the saxophone's saying without the saxophone being able to say words. That's what music about, in my opinion. That's what it's about. Being able to say something on your saxophone without using words. And that's the whole reason I picked up the saxophone in the first place. Being able to say something without using the words. And no, I didn't think when I first, oh, I'm going to use the saxophone to say things without saying words. No. I don't necessarily think that way, but when I put that saxophone in my hands and I go When I put it in, I'm like I'm saying something, but I can't I don't necessarily need the words to say it, but sometimes you need more words to say it. And that's why I play the saxophone. So I'm there. I hope this helps.